sadhana. There is no becoming being. There is no becoming being. It is simply a trick of the mind to think that you need to be established in self. You are that. Just stay as you are wherever you are. Be there, and you need to think. Be here, and you need not think or use mind. This is peace. This is beauty. It is a joke to look for peace when really there is no escape from it. Search and practice is sheer ignorance, because only being stupid requires practice. The river makes no effort or practice to come to the ocean. Cease thinking and making effort and you will get it. Don't complicate yourself with thought and practice. Don't even practice non-practicing. Just stay quiet. The Traps of Search, Practice, and Process Everything you do is for stillness of mind, for happiness. And yet anything that you do disturbs your mind. Because doing is mine. It is a trap. Whether it is samadhi or bliss or whatever, anything that you try to do conceals the diamond with the arrogance of doership. You have been doing for 35 million years. So now, simply keep quiet. The self is not seen during effort, nor is freedom the result of effort. It is already here now. You miss bliss because you search for the transient. But truth cannot be seen. It is the seer. Find that through which you would search and find that being is bliss. Trying and searching comes from all directions, like mosquitoes to distract you from knowing self now. Make no effort, for doing is mine. The brush that cleans the mind is the mind. So it is better to just give the ego mind away because you will speak of cleaning the mind only when the mind is unclean. On three accounts, searching and practice of foolishness and misleading, and are only the clever mind postponing freedom. The first is that it creates a searcher. This reinforces the concept of an individual sufferer that is separate from freedom, and that self is something other than that here and now. The second is the search. Searching is a distraction which causes postponement and endless needless suffering. Searching promotes religions, traditions, and paths to be adhered to, which serve only to trap you deeper in illusion. The truth is only here and now, but the search says, it is tomorrow. The third account is that search creates an object to be found, and this can be the subtlest and most misleading trap. As you start a search, you conceptualize what it is that you are searching for. Since the nature of maya, of illusion, is that whatever you think, so it becomes. Whatever you think the goal to be, you will attain. There is no doubt about this. As you think, so it becomes. So because of your search, you will create and then attain that which you think you are searching for. Any heaven or high spiritual state that you long to attain, you will attain after you conceptualize and create it. Then you will rest satisfied in this trap, thinking that you have attained your heaven. This is pie-in-the-sky freedom, custom-made for you out of your very own thoughts and conditioning of what the ultimate is. The truth is beyond thought, concept, and conditioning. And this truth is what you are. And only the truth is. So stop your search. Simply be quiet. Definitely do not stir a thought or make an effort and the truth will reveal itself to itself. Practice takes ego, which reinforces subject-object relationships, and all practice is through body-mind and senses, which reinforces body-mind identification. 
any identification is misidentification. Whatever you think, you become. So thinking of name and form is thinking of ego, mind, world, senses, illusion. If you must think, think of existence, consciousness, and bliss. Best is to simply know, I am that Brahman. Direct practice is now itself, just being itself. Not waiting for the next moment or the next thought, or the next life to accomplish something. Direct practice is the bliss of turning your face to self. Direct practice is existence. Prescribed sadhana requires and reinforces ego to become something special when, really, we are one. You cannot practice being. You are that. Have no pride. Just simply be self. You have to strike at the root of ego, but not with sadhana, which is by the ego, for the ego. Offer this ego pride to your own silent, peace, self-being. Only going to the source of ego mind with inquiry will do, and once you ask this question, do not come back. Stop thinking and surrender all name and form to silence. Mind is movement, and this is wave. Self is stillness, and this is the ocean. To know yourself, you must stop the movement for one moment and be quiet. The concept of I am the body is the concept of time. Leave the time concept behind by facing the source of all. All concepts are borders. Take on concepts and you take on borders. Another trap is thinking, I am empty, which is ego because it is only relative to the lack of ego mind that the concept of emptiness arises. Therefore, there is no bliss in this emptiness. I am must be dissolved for only emptiness to be. All is emptiness, so how can there be process toward it? Most attempts to remove the wall serve only to fortify it. So effort, method, doing, and process are the deceiving mind. It is not even not doing, so why waste time to clean the mind? Mind is only desire and you are only satyam. Home is here now. Thank you for the love and light and for making yourself so available to all. You say that enlightenment is here and now. In the past, I have tried very hard to wake up from the dream, but I have failed. And this was the cause of your failure, your trying. To find enlightenment, you are not to try for even one second. Trying is postponement, which is time. This time is mind and mind is ego. This is what we understand here and look now. So right now, do not desire for anything or try to do anything and tell me who you are. If you don't try, you won't fail. Why not get it right now without doing anything? Do not make any effort. Do not even think. Then you can see who you are. Is effort important on the path of enlightenment? What effort does a lotus flower need to blossom in the lake? The lotus does not touch the lake, even though it lives in the lake. Only the legs touch the lake, not the head. So make effort with the legs and no effort with the head, and you will see that you will not have any connection or relation with that in which you are living. This samsara is the lake. If you want to live like a lotus, live in the world with no relationship to it. Most people are drowned in the lake and are not called a lotus. They are the creepers going from the bottom. This is a very special method for the few who want to live free of any relationship and yet be involved in relationships totally. This is the secret. If you are aware and if you need it, you can get it, but not otherwise. 
I don't advise to make any effort for peace. It is not the result of effort. The best way is to keep quiet and not to make any effort. Better to be the gopi and make effort to forget him. You must be so much in love with your own self, that place that you must make effort to get out of peace. This is something that you cannot understand. If you want to make effort, make effort to forget your effort of making effort. To go somewhere, you need effort. But to go to your own self, you don't need effort. Wanting to make effort is just putting it away for future where you will move to reach your own self. But just understand what you want and how far this something is from you. Then make a choice of what process it will take to reach him. It is inside of the inside, nearer to you than your breath. Once you understand, the effort will drop by itself. If you don't understand where your beloved is, you must make effort to reach him. When he is behind your retina, how will you look for him? You can't. The eyes will see some object and not the eyes themselves because they don't need to be seen. That which is within is so near and dear it is hiding in your own heart. If you don't make effort, it will reveal unto you itself. I am so glad that I have come to you because I have been searching for a long time. I have done vipassana meditation for 27 years, hatha yoga for 22 years. I can easily go into samadhi and have gone on pilgrimages to over 300 sites in over 40 countries. Still, though I have found some peace, I come for your help. You have done many practices and gone on many pilgrimages and have even found samadhi and peace. But going places and following methods will never pay you. Now you have exhausted yourself and have come here. Here you will not get any method to practice or any teaching. I will not give you a way to practice or a samadhi to enter. The highest way to enter your own self has not been visited by you. You have never questioned who the I is that has done the practices and who has gone on the pilgrimages. Here you have come to find out where this I comes from, and this no teacher will tell you. Now give me a straight answer. Where does the I rise from? You can't say. When you are searching for the source of I, where is your mind? During this short period, when you search for the source of I, upon which practice or pilgrimage is your mind on? Where is the mind? Again, you do not know. Then perhaps you can conclude that there is no mind. If it was there, you could have seen it. There is no difference between mind and time and space. It was mind that was taking you to the spaces and places, and it was the same mind which did all the practices, and it was the mind that entered into samadhi. It has cheated you. This mind has cheated you for lifetimes. You must have developed some merit, this I accept, and this merit will pay you now. The ego has been hindering you by suggesting that you go to a shrine on top of the Himalayas like Badri, Kedar, Gangotri, Yanotri. Actually, the people who go there return with inflated ego, more than what they went there with because they will just say that they have visited the temple there. They don't say what the god of that temple has given. The prasad that they get from those temples is not peace and happiness, but sweets, poras, and coconuts. They are happy with this when they return and distribute these things among many friends and family. There is no place in the world which will give you peace and no God which will give you enlightenment. You have been visiting so many temples, but never did you visit the temple in the cave of your own heart, where I am taking you now. We started with trying to find the source of I, but when the previous I could not find it, I disappeared. Mind was finished, space was finished, time was also finished. 
now, for the third time without thinking of the places or persons or mind or time, and staying in this without thought or effort. If you see anything, tell me what it could be. I do not know. Ah, you do not know. Who is the one who says, I don't know? I don't know is knowledge itself. What is this I, which can even see that there is no knowing? Nothing, emptiness. What is this I? I don't know. Again, you don't know. I will tell you why you do not know. To know or see something, you must have mind, because I must be there. I see the handkerchief. Some observer must be there, some seer. You are the seer of the object that is seen. Now, who is the seer? Find out. When you see the object you are observing and the object is observed, now find out who the observer is. This is my difficulty. Why is it difficult? You have observed three hundred pilgrim places in forty countries. What is this difficulty? Maybe you had some physical difficulty, but with this you can ask who has been fatigued. The body is fatigued. Who is the one who observed the fatigue of the body? What must you do to see the seer? You can't because then you need two observers, and the observer is one. If you can't see the observer, what are you to do? The answer is very simple. The observer has not been seen or touched by anyone so far. So what are you to do? I will tell you that the observer cannot be body because this is seen. It cannot be mind because it thinks and you are the knower, the seer of what it thinks. Now you can't deny and so you must accept that I am the observer. That you have not done. You have searched someone else, but not your own self who has been sitting quietly, patiently in peace. This doesn't take time because it is so near and dear. This is why you miss it. It is too near. Your eye can see the finger, but how can you see the eye? Only in a mirror. Yes, a mirror gives a reflection of the eye, but if you remove the mirror, you remove the reflection. So remove the mirror of eye, which is a reflection itself, and tell me who reflects in the eye to see other reflections. You must go behind the retina of the eye. How? As you get a message from somewhere before the retina to see through the retina, so the eye is a reflection, and the retina of the observer. Again, go back. All that you see comes from your own self. No, I am the self. I am the self. Can you doubt this? I don't doubt it, but I do not know. But is a doubt. There is no difference between doubt and but. Hell, seventh hell, is the result of doubt. When Shiva walks up to you doubting whether or not he is Shankar is a straight elevator to the hell where you will stay until the next Kalpa. Where, after the Creator is born again, will you be given another chance to come to Satsang? This is the result of doubt. I feel that I am at the banks of the river and I have not jumped in. All the retreats and practices you have done have been done on the banks of the river. You are not to move anywhere. You are not to retreat anywhere. Why go on long retreats? Abiding in now is an instant retreat. You are not to abandon or renounce anything any time. Here you are wherever you are. What you have to do is to remove the notion that this is not real or prove that that is real. So don't move anywhere and don't renounce anything. Just find out what is real and don't be attached to what is not real. All the meetings with teachers and visits to holy places are yet on the banks of the river. 
If you go to the Satguru, he will look at you and keep quiet. But if anyone else does this, it won't work because they can't make any money this way. This best and closest Mecca is within you. It is here. You need not pray for it. You need not travel anywhere. Just stay quiet and see that your mind is not racing. If your mind is racing in the beginning, bring it back. Again it will go away and bring it back. Slowly it will learn how to keep quiet, because otherwise it will just receive beatings. This is how you have to train your mind. It will not be happy today or tomorrow, but eventually he will be happy with whatever you give or don't give. So don't let this bull run and plunder other places and get beaten. Keep him home, and he will learn how to keep quiet. All the methods are only intellectual, psychological, but not practical. Non-method is practical. In no method, everything will happen. In this no method, you don't aspire or desire anything. Let go of the search. It is neither effort nor non-effort. It is neither thinking nor non-thinking. I just can't believe that it takes no effort. I always feel that the only way anything will happen is if I push my way into it. Once you stop your pushing, you will feel the power of the pull. Give up all your efforts because only this pull will move you within. Pushing in is not very effective. It is like a whirlpool that pulls you into itself and allows you to sink down. Throw away your oars and break the mast and just keep quiet. The rest will be done for you. I can't trust that this will happen if I do not do it. It is happening by itself. What do you think you are doing here? Just keep quiet and throw away everything that you have, and it will be very smooth sailing. Your rowing and sailing has brought you into so many accidents. Throw away the oars and go along with this river. Give time for this heart to open. It will not open if you are making effort. Be quiet, turn your mind within, and let this heart speak and guide you. When there is no thought, heart will open. Let it work. Don't interfere by making effort. I feel this, I feel an energy, an opening, but it feels like it comes and goes in waves. There seems to be a block to the energy. The coming is the opening, the closing is your resistance to it in the form of your effort. You have been making effort for millions of years and suffering. Decide now what you want. Effort and suffering, or an open heart and happiness. It depends on you. There is no block, there is only now. There is nothing to be completed, so make no intentions because practices to avoid blocks are blocks. The silence always is. Always is complete, beyond notion. I want to end it. Then end it now. Who is stopping you? It is all right. Don't worry and don't be disheartened. It is happening. I have been doing spiritual practices for over 20 years, but I just feel all the more lost in a new set of concepts. I am tired of all this. Can you show me my true nature? I am tired of struggling. For enlightenment, you need not struggle. You only need to struggle to continually carry your concepts. For instance, you may feel that the Son of God will give you peace and happiness. But this will not happen. The Son of God is a concept from the past. Forget all that you have read and all that you have heard. Your parents have told you that you belong to a certain religion and through the Christ of the religion you will be saved. This is foolishness. Come out of all these stupid concepts of the old people. Be brave and simply be quiet. Then all is over. In this quietness you will find peace, not by attending the masses for centuries. 
I've met so many monks in the monasteries and people in the churches, and still they are hanging on to a two-thousand-year-old cross. They have no peace of mind. Rest assured you have to find peace within yourself here in luck now. Instantly get rid of the old concepts of all the sons of gods. You can do it. Just don't think about it. The thinking is the burden. When you think, everything will come. When you don't think, you are with yourself. Do it now, and whose love is in your mind? And who is the lover? And who is the beloved? So no spiritual practice is needed to do this? You need practice when you find you are missing something. For instance, if you want to be an engineer, you must practice and spend seven years in the college and get a master's of engineering degree. But here you do not need practice, because it is already here. What you gain, you will lose. But what is already here, you just have to see. See who and what I am is. Don't find it through some method because the mind will cheat you for millions of years and therefore do not listen to your mind. Just keep quiet and it will reveal itself to itself. You don't need the mind at all. Mind will cheat you and nobody is happy with the mind, not even kings and emperors. You are happy only when there is no mind. When you sleep, there is no mind and you are happy. In the dream and waking state, you are not happy because of all your relationships. When you sleep, you are peaceful. But that is beyond all these states. Who is it beyond sleep who experiences the happiness of the sleep state? You are that. You need a practice to attain something that you don't have now. If you want to be a boxer, you must learn boxing before entering the ring. Practice assumes an absence of something to be achieved at a later date. Because self is not separate from you, no practice is needed to attain it. Self is never absent. Practice is postponing something to a later date to the future. So you need no practice to know yourself. Give up this concept of practice and keep quiet. Simply keep quiet and you achieve everything. Everything comes to you when you ask for nothing. But when you run after things, nothing can come to you. So simply keep quiet and see what happens. All the people have done enough practice and therapy in all the ashrams and centers in the world. But here we don't teach anything. We only tell you that you are that which is always free. How can you become free? How can you change from one thing to another? Self is already here, always changeless. But you think you are different and this mental concept of a difference must be removed. Remove all the concepts from your mind and remove the memory which holds only past. There is no use to enter into the memory and aspire for anything. Just for one instant, keep quiet and see who you are. When you want to sleep, what practice do you need? No practice. So like this you should sleep. This is the prescription of Krishna. When the world around you is sleeping, you keep awake. When they are awake, you keep asleep. What a prescription this is. When the universe is awake, you keep asleep. This means that you should sleep to all the things that the universe is desiring. Not desiring all these things is called sleep. When you sleep, you keep awake. Means that you are awake to yourself. You are awake to the secret of truth. I am the self. But they are sleeping to this secret. This is a very good prescription. The whole world is sleeping, but the wise man is awake. He knows that it is all a dream and that all the dreamers will repent later. So when all these people are flowing downstream, you go upstream. 
It may be difficult, and you may not have any companions who are swimming upstream in the Ganga, but you can do it. This universe is the current going downstream, taking everybody with it. To go against this current of this ocean, you need the might of the decision. I have to do it. This is quite enough. Thank you. I have been doing Kriya Yoga and I have found some peace, but... What do you mean, some peace? You haven't found any peace. Peace doesn't come a little at a time. When it comes, it comes in abundance and devours you, making you peace itself. No individuality is left. Peace attacks you in full force. I just want to go deeper into the peace. There is no depth at all, because in peace there is no division. When it comes, it comes. When it doesn't, it does not. You practiced intense sadhana before realization. Doesn't this mean that you must practice some sadhana to purify the mind? How can you purify the mind by practice? Look at the water in this glass. What is the impurity in it? Impurity is something foreign. Water is pure itself and some dust has entered it. So if you sieve it, water will come out and the dust will stay. This is what I tell you to do. Originally, you are pure like water, and you have not to do anything to be pure. Some foreign element has entered the water, and this is attachment. Just sieve the attachment out of the self, which is already free. You cannot become what you originally are. So you can't return to your original state by practice. You are the original state. Just don't touch what is foreign to it. The foreign entity is attached to something which is not eternal and permanent. Remove this and see what is left. It is what you have always been, even before death. This is mine. I belong to him, our attachments. These thoughts should not come in your way. Freedom is always here. If you win anything, it means that it wasn't there before you got it, and after getting it, you will lose it. Because anything you get, you will lose. So, you have to be as you are always. Don't touch anything which is not eternal, including your own mind, body, senses, which do not belong to you. If you don't touch things, you will see that you have always been free. Freedom cannot be won by any practice. Practice only brings the transient, the material, not the eternal freedom. What was not there will not be there. What is here is always here. A firm belief in this is realization. Often you use Buddha as an example. As I understand, he attained enlightenment through meditation. But you seem to imply that meditation is limited. Can you speak about this? According to Buddhists, you must meditate. According to Buddhists, not according to Buddha. The man passed away and then his students couldn't do it as he did. They couldn't renounce like he did. So they have to do what is easier for them to do. They don't sit quiet. He sat quiet because he rejected everything, even meditation. He simply sat quiet. His freedom wasn't the result of any meditation. Buddhists often don't think about what Buddha was all about. Enlightenment. Most are so busy with their religious practices and paths that they forget to sit quiet as the Buddha did. So be wise and solve this question. Who am I? Then you will know. No teacher can tell you this. Even Buddha kept quiet when Ananda asked him what he found under the Bodhi tree. This silence cannot be explained. But everywhere you go, you will find a play of words of the teacher, not silence. Don't run away from the truth. Buddha didn't run away, but stayed. Unless he got it, he would not eat. This strong decision must be there. Don't run away. It is your problem. I can't say more. 
If this isn't enough, you can see me in your next life. After the master dies, the students don't follow the teaching. There was one teacher who had a lot of rats in his room who would pinch his legs during meditation and disturb him. So for this reason he got a cat and then all the rats disappeared. He had two main disciples. One of them decided to keep two cats tied to his legs during meditation because he thought it would be twice as good as his master. But when the other students saw this, a rivalry arose and he kept four cats tied to his arms and legs. Now the number of the students was proportional to the number of cats, and so they each started to keep more and more cats. And their students started keeping cats, but there was no meditation. So to remove the rats, the master kept the cat. This is quite reasonable, but cats are not the source of enlightenment. This is what happens. Yesterday you guided someone to self so beautifully. Can you give me this same road map? I have thrown that map away. Can you then put a little current in the stream that my little leaf can follow? There is no map and the little stream will just go wherever she will. Throw away all maps and just let it flow. Then where will you discharge into? She will discharge back home, in the ocean. My home is here. If your home is truly here, then there cannot be any there. If you are there, then you need a map to get back here, back home. But if you are home, you do not need any maps. So just stay as you are and throw away all maps which have been misleading you. But I don't want to throw away all the maps. This would be like saying that all I have done has been a waste of time. But I do not feel this way. I feel that all I have done up to now has been beneficial. Yes, up to now, as you say. Now you have arrived at now and all is over. You are up to now. You are home. Throw away all your maps. You don't need a map in now because now is what you are. Now is home and you are here. And you are that. Give up all notions of maps. Destroy all notions. They are absolutely not needed now that you are up to now. Stay as thus. That is all. Wherever you go and whatever you do, you are free. This here has no corridors, frontiers, or demarcations, you see. Go on expanding. This here is expanding, expansion itself. It is never-ending and expands wherever you go. It is space and this is what you are. You are not in space, but you are space. This is all that you have to know. This is already yours. Aha! I just caught myself looking for my glasses through my glasses, so it is with freedom. People say, I want to be free, I want to be enlightened. You are searching for that through that. You search for consciousness through consciousness. If you give up the search, you will see. It will come to you that you are wearing your glasses, and you will know that you are consciousness. Don't search for anything and don't expect anything, and you will find it. It is already here, and is not an object to be found. It is the subject searching for itself. When you stop searching, you will know who am I. If you give up your notions and intentions, you will immediately understand. The only impediment, the only hindrances, are your notions and concepts and intentions. You are searching for the glasses through the glasses, searching for freedom through freedom. Freedom is not an object to be found, but is the subject which is searching. I feel that I have one foot in the water and one foot out, one eye looking for the diamond and one on samsara. Your feet will be together. You can't have one foot in satsang and one foot across the street with the pigs. If one foot is with the pigs, then they both are. If you are here, 
then both your feet will be here, and both eyes will be on the diamond. Under the ocean of samsara there is a diamond. Dive for it. The one who wears this diamond is in peace, love and beauty. But if you wear any other diamond, you will be in fear. This diamond is very close to you, very near. How near? I will tell you a story. There was one very special pickpocket who would never touch gold or money. He would only steal diamonds. He came to Delhi which had a diamond market for centuries, with the moguls as the main customers. This pickpocket went to the shops posing as a customer until he found his victim. He found a man purchasing a very costly diamond worth about $50,000. He followed him to the Delhi train station where they both purchased tickets to a deluxe, first-class, two-berth coupe bound for Calcutta. The diamond merchant, who was a clever man, suspected that he was being followed. He had seen this man at the diamond market, at the booking office, and now, in his coop. Now, as night falls, he goes to change his clothes in the bathroom, and is very careful to keep the diamond in a safe place. In the night, when the merchant slept, the pickpocket searched through everything, including the clothes that the merchant was wearing, and the bathroom but he couldn't find anything. Finally, the next morning, Howra Junction came and both of them stepped out of the train. The pickpocket introduced himself to the merchant and said, I am a pickpocket who picks up only diamonds. It is below my dignity to touch gold. I saw you purchased a diamond yesterday and in the night I searched everywhere for it, even in your shoes and in your underclothes but I didn't find it anywhere. So will you tell me where you kept the diamond? I saw a lot of money, your checkbook and your gold watch, but I didn't touch anything. The merchant replied, I smelled that you were a clever man, but I also am very shrewd. So when you went to change your clothes last night, I put the diamond into your coat pocket. I knew that you would not search your pockets, but only search my pockets. Then this morning, when you went to use the bathroom, I took the diamond out again. And here it is. So what this story tells is that you will always look to other places. Everybody has the diamond, but we search the pockets of others. We go from ashram to ashram, from swami to swami, from satsang to satsang. But never will you get it because it is in your own pocket. God himself has kept the diamond in each heart, and yet we search for it elsewhere. The diamond is here, and if you do not think or make effort, you will have it. In between these two conditions of not thinking and making no effort is a diamond. Everywhere else you will find commercial business. Yoga teachers and other teachers will charge you money, but here, it is all free, because we are not commercial. The diamond I speak of cannot be sold. You can have it in an instant. You can do it. You remind me of the musk deer who wanders through the forest looking for where the smell of musk is coming from, not knowing that the musk is in his own navel. You have smelled freedom, and you have come here to find it like so many have, and they are all like musk deer. The musk is within you. Freedom is within you. Stop your searching. Freedom is within. Put yourself in that between past and future. The mind has been hanging you for lifetimes. Now... Hang the mind between past and future and see what happens. Don't touch your mind to any object and see who you are. Keeping quiet is much easier now and more blissful, but still I feel there is a layer separating me from myself. Don't look here or there for anything and you will find that the goal is already arrived. This layer is a desire and you will be happy. 
The only thing you must do to be happy is to stop having and holding desires, because this will give you trouble. If you do get it, you will lose it, and then you will be troubled. Just keep quiet, and don't hold any desire. It seems that one develops detachment and relaxation after years of spiritual practice. Is there a process or progress before realization? It is beyond attachments and detachments. When one detaches from that which he is attached to, he gets attached to something else. So detachment needs attachment to something else. And therefore, it is not detachment. Attachment depends on detachment, and detachment depends on attachment. The essence is beyond all notions and is untouched by imagination, and there is no progress or process in it. To progress is to be given some method from the past by somebody. Any method that he has followed gets dunked on you, and then you start practicing. So whatever method you start, you have in your mind what you want to attain. This attainment is pre-planned attainment that you plan to get after a number of years of practice. This planning is your own thought creation. Actually, there is no process because it is already here. If it is not already here and you get it through some method, you will lose it. Any gain is lost some day or another, but if it is not attained, you will not lose it because it is here and always will be here. You say no book or practice is necessary, but you yourself have read many books and have done thousands of hours of practice in this lifetime. Why then do you give this advice? Because I was just a boy of seven or eight and some experience came and revealed itself. I didn't work for it or do any practice. It just revealed itself. No one could explain this to me, and it was not described in any book either. Later on, I tried to read the books written by many saints, including the Gita, Bhagavatam, the Upanishads, and even the Vedas. But I didn't see anything that tallies with my own abidance. I found that nobody ever spoke of that which I am, is. For this reason I read many books and came in contact with many gurus from north to south. But everything that they spoke about was all in the books, and they followed this like sheep running one behind the other. No one that I saw had realized the truth and nobody spoke about it. Therefore, I rejected all the teachings, all the books, and all the statements that anybody so far has made about that. Then. I met my master. Now when I speak, it is not the object of speech that I am speaking about. Some people catch it and they cannot explain what has happened. For sixty years I have asked people to describe it, but they cannot, because the intellect and mind, which is the basis of explanation, does not accompany you. You are quite alone. There is no mind or intellect. You are just alone. It can never be explained, though many people say they got it. They don't know what they got, but they know they got it. It is not even an experience, because experience depends on the mind to create an experiencer, an object of experience, and the connection which is the experience, all of which can be explained. But what is beyond the mind cannot be explained. Even the Book of Knowledge, the Vedas, say, Nadi Nadi, after four Vedas. This book written by Vyasa 25,000 years ago is very honest to speak that it is not that which they could write. The best explanation is Nadi Nadi. Not this, not this, I do not know. You said I can drop my search. If there was no search, then why wouldn't all the lazy people become enlightened? When I say drop the search, it means the search that you have carried all of your life in many of the previous incarnations. 
this search must end because you must realize that you cannot search for it because you have not lost it. So those who go to satsang will realize that it is not by searching that they will be free. For them it is advised to give up the search. Lazy people are also searching for things but not for the self. Sincere seekers search from place to place for where truth is available. But when you know that you are not to search and you know, I am that, here and now, you don't need to be a sincere seeker, but you need a teacher. This seeker needs a teacher to tell him that it is not by laziness nor by activity that it is found. Only know who you are. So understand I am already that. You can understand this, but since birth you have been an extraordinary being. Is it really possible for an ordinary person like me to be free? What should I do to understand this, and what should I not do? It is neither doing anything nor not doing anything. So sadhana is just a waste of time. Sadhana can be a complete waste of time or... If you are with the best people, it can be the best use of time. Then you are spending time where there is no time. I have had such a proud mind, but in the last week you have exposed all the parasitic tendencies of pride in the mind. Going through this experience has been like going through an illness, and I am very thankful for this. Papaji is full realization of process or is the idea of process just a form of postponement? Your essence cannot be achieved by any process. This idea of process is just to postpone the precious present time to be realized. Everybody wants to make a process and postpone. They go to pilgrimage places. They become pilgrims in the expectation of getting peace. But they don't get it. They go to temples, but they don't get peace. They make charities and build temples, bridges, and wells, but they do not get peace. All of these activities which they have done will pay them a reward in the heaven after death. It will not go to waste. But as he strains in the high altitudes of the Himalayas on his pilgrimage, he will not find peace even if he is at the top of Everest at 29,000 feet. The people who went there did not find peace, but came back exhausted. Peace is not found anywhere, neither down in the ocean nor up in the skies. You will spend many ages looking for peace until you will know how easily peace is available in no process. Simply attend a satsang once or twice, and you may be enlightened in this life, in this year, in this hour, now. If you make up your mind that you will be free in this lifetime, you will find that it is fiction, that there is a mind. This mind is postponement. There must be mind where there is postponement and there has been postponement for generations. Someone here or there will make up their mind to cease the postponement and do it at any cost. When this strength comes, it reveals itself, not through a process and with none of your effort involved. Some call it grace. Win this grace by being very beautiful inside. Outside beauty will not give you peace. You have seen the skin beauty of the outside and the Miss Universe pageant two days ago. This beauty fades in a few years. So first, think of the inner beauty. When you see your inner beauty, you do not need judgment and you do not need to compete. People will be drawn to you by this inner beauty. This Maharshi of Tiruvannamalai did not get a title but he is the most beautiful person to whom all the beauties were attracted. The queens came to him, and the diamonds and jewelry and everything was offered to him, but he didn't even look at it. 
I was there when Queen Sophia of Spain came. She approached the manager of the ashram to introduce her to the Mahashi. Then gold jewelry and diamonds and baskets of fruit were carried in to the Maharshi. The manager, Maharshi's own brother, wanted him to have a look at the presents and to bless the queen for the thousands of dollars worth of things that she brought. But he didn't look at her or her things. I was watching this. If there is so much money and a queen walks in front of you, will you not look? Everybody would look at her and the money and at least give a word of thanks. But he was unmoved like a mountain. Then this Drigananda Swami told the queen that he was blessing her. But she didn't know this Indian blessing. Not moving, not looking, the eyes open but not seeing her. This is true beauty. Papaji, please show me the way to this beauty, to ultimate freedom. Who told you that there is a way to freedom? Where did you get this map? There is no way to freedom. Way means that you start from somewhere and arrive to somewhere else, and that there is a distance to your destination. But you don't need to go anywhere else. The creation of distance is the deception of the mind. So forget about any way and any freedom also. If you do this, stay wherever you are. You are not to run anywhere else. Somehow you must get rid of this concept of the mind. Stay as you are, wherever you are. If you do this instantly, you will know that you are what you have searched for for millions of years. There is no search because search is only for the lost. But when nothing is lost, there is no meaning to searching for an object. Here, simply keep quiet. Don't stir a thought from the mind. Then you will know who you really are. Should I abide as the pure eye and have faith that purity will come? Don't waste your time in the purity of mind because mind cannot be pure. Even the desire to be pure is the trick of the mind. You will spend many lives purifying the mind, but it will never be pure. Look at the story of Vishwamitra and Manika. After purifying his mind for 10,000 years, he still falls for her instantly. It is better to just allow your desires to arise and not let them touch you. Let them arise and let them be fulfilled. You simply stay quiet. Don't try to become anything. Don't go anywhere. And don't do anything and don't undo anything. Find the source of these concepts and stay there. This is bliss, nothing else. This knowledge is bliss. The Traps of Religions, Traditions, and Ashrams Religions, traditions, and ashrams often start good but turn bad when they fall into the hands of those who want gain and fame. Enlightenment is not the product of these religions. As you can see throughout history, the work of religions is fear and death, fear of hell and death to the infidels. Take the hell out of religion and it will not be a religion. Religion is fear and fake. Fear is the very foundation of religion. Religion is a hindrance to freedom and has even banned, I am free. So walk out of them because you are. You are complete. Here and now. You do not need the sheep's fold. You do not need any religion. You are always free. Are there some traditional things that must be done in order to proceed on the inner path? On the inward path, there is no tradition. You need no traditions at all. Other traditions are outward. The Rudraksha beads have nothing to do with it though they help with physical problems and may give you a tranquil mind. You can wear the same cloth that others do, but tradition is outside, only physical and mental. Inside, you are simply to sit quiet 
and not allow your mind to touch the outside. Sit for just one second like this, and you have fulfilled the purpose of your life. Just don't let your mind touch any tradition, and you will be finished with samsara. I had a dream where a panther with green eyes ate me, except I was in the form of a sheep. I realized it was self dissolving my sheep like mentality. Everybody in the world is a sheep who is always looking for a shepherd. The shepherd usually is the founder of some religion. You are a Catholic priest, so you know this. The shepherds don't allow the sheep to go away from the herd, and so the sheep stay as sheep. But some have escaped the shepherd and the sheep herding dogs, the priest, and are no longer controlled. There have been some good saints in these traditions who spoke of the truth, and their different scriptures have some good sayings. But for the most part, I have seen very little benefit from them, even though I have traveled all over the world for decades looking for it. I am glad you have come here and crossed over the religious barriers. You have come here as an independent person. You need independent views and understanding to know yourself. Don't depend on the past or anything you have heard or read in the past because the truth is now. Get free yourself now, and then you can understand what the saints have said and written. Can one find the truth through any religion? Yes, one can find final truth in any religion. But they must be ardent, true, and honest to really love God. It is not about going to church or to a temple. You won't find God there, but only within. Religion doesn't have much to do with the life of men except for giving fears. So if you live without religion, at least you won't have any fear. Live independently, it is better for you. The God of religions is a projection of security to take care of your projected fears, desires, and possessions. It seems that spiritual communities are filled with hierarchy, formality, and control. This seems to contradict what freedom is. Hierarchy and power struggles seem especially common around spiritual masters. You have had a taste of freedom. But then you started censoring other people and judging what is good behavior and what is bad. Stay with the experience of freedom and don't look at the inadequate behavior of others or you will lose your chance. Don't push freedom into the background by getting involved with what others do or don't do. Let them do whatever they want and whatever is in their karma to do. Who are you to check them? How long will you spend finding faults with them? One hundred years? People will always have faulty behavior, and you will have to keep being born over and over just to judge them. There will be no end of it. It is far better to take care of yourself and to fulfill your purpose. You have come for a definite purpose. Don't look here and there. Just Sit quiet. You are just like the man who found a diamond and tied it around the neck of his donkey and kept working hard carrying bricks. This foolishness happens to everybody until they come to satsang and are appraised of the fact that they are a valuable diamond. This diamond has been shown to you, but again you tied it around the donkey of your mind. This will never give you happiness. Mind your own business and let others do what they are destined to do. You can't put your finger in this process. It belongs to someone very intelligent who knows how to look after the people. Take care of yourself. If you ever have the experience of self again, forget everything. Even the kings have rejected the kingdoms and have gone to the forest quite satisfied. Your ultimate desire must be freedom, whether you are with a saint or not. Now you have become lost, because you are in the company of people who do not speak of freedom. 
Ashrams do some good things, but most of them are just interested in the social relations of their guru, brothers and sisters. They don't sit quiet. I don't recommend that anybody waste their time with useless activities and not sit quietly. Don't just create social relationships with people all over the world. Sit quiet. You have to see whether or not your mind is peaceful in your ashram situation. It doesn't pay to just socialize or to just gossip about other people or to just read books. Sitting quiet is most essential. Don't waste your time by not doing this. Useful Sadhana and Dropping Practices There is no sadhana better than just staying as peace. If you must do any practice, then do vichara. Joy is also a good sadhana because it destroys mind, so always be happy. Always think of it and be happy. Spend the rest of your life knowing you are existence, consciousness, bliss. Some practice is better than getting lost in samsara and is good in that it sometimes fatigues the mind. But typical sadhana is usually important only for the ego. All sadhana is projected by ego so it is on a sandy foundation. This ego projection is samsara so search only for the seeker. I is the ego, so when this meditates, there are no good results. Choice of practice depends on the choice of results. Brahman has no attributes and is beyond mind, so no practice will take you to that. It is self-revealing. Ramana says, simply keep quiet, for it is here and now. This is the nearest practice because Brahman is your very nature. Though I do not prescribe practices, some of them are prescribed in the scriptures as being a benefit. Since you have some questions regarding them, I will tell you about them, but they will not necessarily give you freedom and will seduce most people into the trap of process. First, know who you are. Then do sadhana if you wish. Dropping Practice How to Stay More Stable in Self does formal practice help? Simply witness the circumstances. Don't be touched by them. Don't receive them. Simply witness and keep separate from the circumstances. I've been practicing purification techniques given to me by Tibetan Buddhists. But you're helping me be the practice, not just to do a practice. Yes, you must be the practice. I don't tell you to practice anything but to get into the practice. This is very hard to understand for those who are not serious, for those who want to continue in samsara. Even if you tell them, they will not be able to see that this is all illusion. It is as if they are in a desert and believe that they see a river which will quench their thirst. So they run after it, but it just continues to shift farther away. Everybody, six billion people, are running after their desires, wanting to have a nice swim in the cool waters of the mirage. Above them is the hot sun on their heads, and below is the hot sands under their feet, and still they run toward it. So this is your own creation. It is illusion. There is no river. But when somebody tells you this, you do not believe them. Only a few believe that it is a mirage. Buddha rejected it, and still 2,600 years later he gives us peace because he rejected everything and won everything. Like this, you must sacrifice all things that trouble you. You gave me the name Sadhana one year ago. Can you tell me what it should mean to me now? Sadhana means practice. Any kind of practice, dancing, singing, running, swimming, all of them need practice. Keeping quiet also means sadhana, and this is the meaning for you because keeping quiet is the best sadhana for anything that you want to do. 
Sadhana has one more meaning that few know. Keep quiet and I will tell you. I have let go and I am waiting to continue my meditations. What kind of letting go is this? Why do you want to continue your meditations? Because it feels good. You have to let it all go. Even your meditations and the meditator. Even let go of the desire for meditations and the desire for emptiness. I trust that my mind and desires will disappear. You have to disappear. So many people go off to some cave to do their sadhana, but their minds follow right with them and their practices increase their bondage. If you disappear, where will mine be? I met one such man as I was on my way to Badri. It was a very rainy night, and so I asked a Baba in a small hut if I could sleep in his hut for the night. He said yes, and so I gave him some money to buy vegetables and dal, and we ate at ten o'clock at the banks of the Ganga. Then I saw a hut raised above the Ganga and offered to sleep there. But he insisted that I sleep in his hut, which he thought would be more comfortable. He had been living here for thirty-six years supported by a man who sent him twenty rupees a month. His bed was made out of sand and covered with burlap cloth and, of course, so was his pillow. You could really see his renunciation of the world. I thought it was better not to have such a hard pillow and when I removed the pillow there was a magazine of sexy film fare with nude photos of women. Why live on the path to Badri Narayan? if this is what you are keeping in your mind. What is the use of his meditation? Better to keep yourself in the house and don't hear it. Be it. Surrender to his will. What comes, comes by his will. What goes, goes by his will. <laughs>